How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben Hassin here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you and y'all, my place is starting to look kind of kind of messy because we are in the process of starting to move my stuff out. So, uh, in the last vlog, I loaded my car up with the Calax shelves that was back there. So tonight, I'm going to go deliver it. Uh, last night, I spent all my time getting rid of all my wall decor. So, the cute cutesy eclectic uh south asian inspired decor that i manifested over the last three years in this apartment complex is completely gone even even the shelving that i had on my bed so um all of that's taken out taken down and stored away these are the decor that i'm going to keep i'm gonna take this with me to durham of course the picture of chadwick boseman is here to stay also it was a really really thoughtful gift from an uh, old partner of mine so i'm going to be keeping that and um getting rid of all of these paintings because i originally got them from the goodwill anyways so that will be donated all of this stuff is going to be donated all the ottoman is going to be donated someone's picking up that couch on friday so we have uh we have been getting to work. Also, I managed to start boxing some stuff. So these are things that I don't really use often. So I started boxing them up. That's three boxes right there. And lastly, I have an additional box under the bit under the bathroom sink. That's all the cleaning supplies that I'm taking with me. And this entire top of my dresser is cleaned up. This dresser was, is gonna be given for free to a friend. And I have all my fragrances and jewelry in this box. So, <laughs> even though my apartment still looks like there's a lot to pack, I've actually done most of the packing uh, that I need to do other than the bare essentials that's going to keep me going for the next three weeks here. Before I head off to deliver the dresser tonight though, um, the shelving I ended up using some heavy duty, heavy duty anchors to the drywall because I was putting stuff on them that were relatively heavy. So they have some big holes here and there's one in the bathroom. So I want to make sure that I am not charged extra for any of those repairs. So I'm uh, on my way back from the gym today. I'm going to get some um, drywall hole uh, fillers. I think, what, what what is it called? I'm so bad at this. Um, <clears throat> scrumming, scrub, scrub, something. Uh, but I got to um, fill these holes up before my inspection in a couple of weeks. But uh, other than that, we are uh, we are making do with what with what we have. Oh, we'll work with what we got for now. I guess I won't be needing this anymore. Huh. Regift? So I just finished packing everything that was inside that TV console and within these, this coffee table and this end table. Don't worry about the stuff on top. Um, that's a placeholder into this box luckily almost everything fit in there and there's still a little bit of space that i can put stuff in but now the coffee table is ready for the person that's going to come on friday to get it for free um so something that i noticed is that there was like a loose pen in this drawer and there were so many pen marks i was like oh my gosh i can't give this away like i feel so guilty if i'm gonna give them something with all these pen marks but um, this, this drawer was completely fine. But if you're wondering how I got this to look all brand new, it's actually not any cleaners because cleaners don't get rid of any, any um, pen, pen marks even though it says stain removal, it's alcohol. So luckily during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I panic bought a ton of 99% alcohol, or is it 
99% alcohol to make my own hand sanitizer. So I had a lot left over. This is the Solimo brand, it's from Amazon. I bought like a 12 pack. And all you really have to do is uh, dab some alcohol where, where the pen stains are at and then just wipe it away with some, a paper towel. I'll show y'all how I did it. So I'm going to demonstrate it on this little dish pan that I usually put my keys in. I'm going to use a Sharpie, but uh, the same thing works for pen. Y'all know that Sharpies are permanent. Uh, you can't really get rid of these stains. So I'm just going to draw on it, right? And oh my gosh, I totally destroyed it. What do I do? All I do is I, all I do is uncap some alcohol, pour a little bit on there. Perfect. Not too much. You don't have to use that much. And I grab some paper towel. You can see I was already smearing a little bit. There you go. Voila. It's clean. Isn't that amazing, y'all? Um, thank God for me watching a bunch of DIY stuff in the last couple of years because I'm embracing my inner inner trans dad vibes so i learned all these cool little life hacks because uh college age ben who first got into medical school and moved out for the first time would be freaking out if i stained any of my stuff with pen mark another thing that i bought that i realized oh i have like a cowling that's like all the way up in the air like jimmy neutron <laughs> another thing that i realized was super super beneficial that i didn't realize until i this actually came in is that I, I bought this bubble wrap it's so so tiny now but it was like huge i bought this bubble wrap and it was actually it actually has perforations i don't know if y'all will be able to see it now but a lot of the bubble wrap, bubble wrap companies didn't have perforations so i'll put the i'll put the affiliate link down below yeah this is the last sheet but i need to buy another roll <laughs> because I went through the entire thing already, but it has perforations on this side. So I was able to easily cut, tear off squares. And this ended up being the perfect size for little things that I needed to bubble wrap, kind of like this. Or my fragrances were really helpful because they were already pre-cut and I didn't have to cut them and cut them to shape. I just tore it off and then uh, pasted it or rubber banded it together. So I highly recommend the bubble wrap that I got because um, it made my life so, so much easier. Um, Y'all, so something just really serious just happened. Um, while I was filming this vlog, I was supposed to go to campus about an hour or two ago to pick up this gift card that I won and today was the day to pick it up. But um, for some reason, something in me just wasn't feeling going down to campus and I have to go through Midtown in Atlanta to uh, get it. And turns out, um, right if I were to go, right during that time, a mass shooting happened. Um, my campus is completely shut down. Everyone's told to shelter in place. So I'm getting like a little bit of goosebumps right now um but something out there was looking out for me today because i was going to drive through that road where it happened literally when it happened that incident happened so um very very grateful uh right now and very grateful that um i chose to um do stuff at home and do a little bit of vlogging instead and you know the thing is I was I was set to go I was almost about to get start getting ready putting on my clothes to drive down there because the gift card is about $50 and that would have helped me out a lot uh, with some of these expenses but something in me just was telling me don't go so I was like, okay, I'll just stay home and hopefully they'll reach out and schedule another day where I can pick it up. Just incredibly grateful. And like, I'm so grateful for my friends because they're texting me right now and telling me to be careful too because they know that um, I usually, you can hear police sirens. Usually um, I hang around that area uh, where it happens. I just, um, I'm a little speechless, uh, 
Um, I just hope the victims are okay and their families are okay and uh, and uh, just glad that I'm okay too I don't know how I can like <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because it's not funny but like it's just like it's such an unfortunate situation um, I don't <coughs> know I can how I can transition uh, from such a somber statement, but I'm going to try to because it's life and things like this happen. I'm just, I just can't believe we live in a world where things like this happen and we're expected to just deal with it. Okay, I could be just going to school to get a freaking gift card and because I'm like a first generation student and I really need that money. And imagine wanting, having to do something like that and getting getting like injured or even having my life taken away from me i just can't imagine things like this happen and so frequently in this country all right so it's been about an hour to two hours um i managed to fill up this entire box with all the things along with some miscellaneous items um that was in the living space so um more and more progress being made every day y'all hey y'all it's it's a couple of hours since i had that confusion on what what am i talking about when it comes to filling the holes and what's it called i just remember it's called spackling spackle spackle and you spankle I don't know. <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna get that tonight after i drop off the um the uh the bookshelf to my friend from home depot get a quick uh, gym workout in and come home and hopefully have dinner and not be way too stressed out. So I just got back from uh, the gym and dropping off that bookshelf, which was really easy to do, honestly. Um, taking it downstairs was the hard part, <laughs> but taking it over, uh, over to another house's porch was super, super easier. But after that, I went to go to the gym, but I ended up dropping off the shelf and some... And, near Duluth, Georgia, which is the Korean food capital of the South. And it started to make me crave that tofu soup that I had a couple of weeks ago in that other vlog that I did. And I really, really liked it. I love that sundubu. Um, it's called Korean sundubu, tofu soup. I'm not sure if I'm doing the pro uh, correct pronunciation, but I'm trying. Uh, the thing is, is that usually you can go to H Mart and get like a little pack or you could buy it from a restaurant, but I didn't want to spend any more money. Um, I looked at the recipe for Sundubu and it seems like I have most of the ingredients. Um, so I'm going to try to whip it up, except I don't have the key ingredient, which is the Sun Tofu. So uh, today we're going to attempt to make Sundubu. Sin Sundubu soup. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, y'all. Y'all gonna be following me on this journey because I am not for, uh, following an official recipe because I'm too lazy and this is dinner time. So I need something quick in like 20 minutes. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with some boiling water. And I have all these dried shiitake mushrooms. I'm gonna add a ton of these because they add a ton of protein to uh, any form of soup and I need a pretty high protein meal. So I'm gonna open this up. I don't know if it's gonna taste good, so we're all gonna find out near the end of this. Uh, um, I know I should be, should have been soaking this for hours, <laughs> preferably overnight, but uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with uh, this and I should chop them up too, but you know, it is what it is. We're gonna put, I want a ton of, uh, protein all right so we got that going i'm not adding any salt or pepper because i feel like uh all the other ingredients are going to add salt and pepper to it but if i have to i will let's soak in there it seems to be absorbing moisture pretty well we're gonna add some fish sauce i bought this like i'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce it because i haven't looked up the proper pronunciation um but it's called the Flying Lion brand. It's like a more expensive fish sauce. It comes in a smaller container. It's not like that really cheap squid brand. I wanted to get something more pungent and um, it has so much flavor packed into it. So 
Uh, the online recipe that I saw also asked for some fish sauce, so we're gonna add some of that. Fish sauce have plenty of salt, that's why. I'm trying not to add any. Okay, that I think that's enough, right? <laughs> All right, we're just uh, eyeballing this. And then the recipe also asked for some soy sauce, so I'm just gonna add the standard Kikkoman soy sauce that everybody has on their uh, on their pantry. So I'm gonna add a little bit, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> we go in a little chaotic today, fellas. All right. Um, now the traditional uh, Sundubu has clam and. Uh, anchovies in it but i have none of those but i do have some hondashi right here so we're gonna add some hondashi and see if it <laughs> does anything if you're korean and watching this and cringing uh just know that i am not i am not claiming that this is actual sundubu of course, there's not even real sundubu in here in this dish. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> I feel like it eats a little bit more. Okay, I think that's perfect. Mm. It doesn't smell like sundubu. <laughs> it tastes like shiitake mushrooms and hondashi. <laughs> it looks like a really clear broth soup right now. I'm pretty sure if we just served this at a restaurant, people would pay like 15 bucks for this. This is why I didn't want to go to a restaurant because the closest restaurants I found that had the cheapest Sundubu in Duluth after I delivered that bookshelf was like $15 and I was like oh hell no I can make this home at home for like two. Um, I also considered going to H Mart and just buying Soon to Tofu soup and buying a kit because kits are only like $3 and you add Soon Tofu soup which is another $2.50 so altogether it's a $5 dish where you would spend about $15 at a restaurant. But um, I just didn't have time to go to H Mart so I can get to the gym on time. So uh, we're doing this. I kind of want to try one of the mushrooms by itself. I'm just going to grab a little one. Dab it out, dab it out, dab it out. Ooh, smoky, smoky. <laughs> Why am I like this? Ow, 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 hot, 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 hot. Okay, all right, we got to wait, we got to wait. <laughs> Ow, I just burned my fingertips. Ah, yes, everyone. This is your psychiatrist and what he does at home. So, just so you know, doctors seem super smart. They seem like know-it-alls and they know everything about you. And yes, they might. If they care about you, they will listen to you and treat you as you should. And I have a lot of in a lot of stuff in my noggin. But outside of work, I'm like this. <laughs> Wow, that definitely tastes like soggy shiitake mushrooms, but it's okay. It has the flavor and it's really good. Mm. You know, I'll take it. It's not fresh, but it is what it is. To be honest, all y'all, after tasting the shiitake mushrooms, I definitely think it needs a little bit more fresh sauce. I'm gonna add some more. Hopefully I won't regret it. Oh yeah, it did ask for some chili oil in this recipe. So I'm going to improvise on that too. Just going to add a little bit more. Just get a bit more fishy taste. Okay. So now the recipe calls for Korean red pepper powder. But I don't got that either. I know this looks like Korean red pepper powder because it originally was. But uh, I finished all of that and what's in here is Indian chili powder. So, <laughs> um, we'll see how this goes. Alright, we'll add some right now. I'm not gonna go super crazy, but I can take a bit of heat. I can, cause uh, your boy is South Asian. Yo, it's starting to look a little bit like Sundubu, not as red, obviously. And because I don't have chili oil, I do have this, which is something that I add to my ramen. This is more Indonesian crispy prawn chili oil. 
It does have a strong prawn flavor to it, but I think it'll heighten the sundubu a little bit. Um, but I love adding this to ramen. This is one of my favorite things to add to ramen. Actually, when I made those popcorn, uh, Maggie popcorn chicken noodles, uh, when I ran out of the Maggie noodles, I had some uh, popcorn chicken left over and I made the popcorn chicken with this and added noodles to it. It was fantastic. So we're gonna add some of this. See, there, there is some chili oil consistency in this, but I'm not gonna add too much because I don't want it to overpower the flavor. Okay, y'all, it's been simmering for a little bit and I did give it a taste and it tastes pretty good, but still it's very, very spicy, even spicy, it's really spicy for me. I think it's that Indian chili. So I'm gonna add a little bit. I added some oyster sauce to it too, to give it a little bit of more umami and a little bit more salt because it is still a little bit low on salt. But because it's so spicy, I'm gonna add a little bit of cane sugar. Um, and you're like, if you're thinking like, why are you doing that, Ben? Well, Korean Korean foods really do pride itself on the sweet and savory and spicy components. I think the cane sugar should be fine as long as I don't add too much. All right, Ben. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Okay, that's enough. That should be enough. Okay, y'all. It looks pretty darn good it's a little dark still and i'm gonna attribute it to the fact that i don't have korean pepper powder what is that called again there's a word for it not gochujang but uh, it sounds similar i'll po post it down below if i figure it out um but let's give it a bit of a taste Mmm. Wow, it's kind of sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna have to add more chili powder. Mmm, but it's really good. Y'all. Wow. This is fantastic. Actually, it's not sweet at all. I just had to let it simmer for a bit. Ooh, it's still pretty spicy. But y'all, this is really good. It's not, it doesn't taste very much like Sundubu. It tastes like it's really distant cousin, but it is fantastic. So um, since I don't have the actual tofu, the Sun tofu, what I think I'm gonna do is instead of one egg, I'm gonna add two eggs because I want that extra protein. And then I'm gonna let it cook and poach and I think that'll be it. And that'll be my dinner for tonight. Woo! All right. Oh my God, it looks so good. Ha! <laughs> what? Y'all, this is so good. Mmm. Okay, so it is like a combination of miso soup because I use a lot of Japanese stuff <coughs> like the dried shiitake mushrooms and um, and the uh, hondashi but uh, tastes like if miso soup had a baby with sundubu it was fantastic oh my god and all together it's like um, at least at least 20 grams of protein in here 20 25 so this is a good this is an excellent uh post-workout meal that is brothy and soupy which is what i was wanting <sighs> good morning y'all i am already huffing and puffing the day after i made that sundubu sin sundubu sip and that is because i have my weight belt on and we just cleared off as much of the living space stuff that i was gonna donate as possible need to vacuum this carpet and roll it up but this morning i've been at it john luke is very confused i feel so bad because he's like where are all the stuff that i'm not supposed to scratch um but yeah we got rid of the ottomans all the paintings i had here and some miscellaneous items i was planning on donating and a whole bag of clothes that i was planning on donating so we have done 
all of that. And surprisingly, my car is not even full. So I was getting a little worried when I loaded the Calax shelves onto my car because I was like, oh my God, the Calax shelf took up like 75% of my cargo space. How am I gonna, how am I gonna haul all my stuff to Durham even if I'm doing two trips? But uh, it turns out the Calax shelf was just huge. Um, the fact that it didn't even fit in a car <laughs> is a uh, is, uh, <laughs> feat in itself. But uh, yeah, uh, let, let's go see how much I loaded onto the car. And this is it, y'all. It's quite a bit of stuff. Oh my God, two Ottomans and all of these paintings and a printer along with a basket full of other stuff. And it all fit in my car with plenty of space left. I'm going to be very satisfied when I actually have this load have to load my car for this move because I think it, it'll be pretty seamless. This entire move up process could not have been done without my weight belt. Oh my gosh, if you are moving by yourself or you're doing most of the heavy grunting, grunting and lifting by yourself when you're moving out, especially like a single person like me, I highly recommend a weight belt because it protects your back when you're hauling big stuff. No matter how strong you are, your back is not as strong as your biceps or any other muscle that you have and it's prone to injury. And as I'm getting older, I'm becoming more and more self-conscious of that for sure. Um, in addition to a weight, belt, a weight belt, if you have wrists that can get injured easily, I haven't been using these, but I have them, but there are wrist braces. All of these are weightlifting, bodybuilding stuff you can find in like the bodybuilding section of any sporting goods store or online marketplace. I will put all the stuff I use, like this weight belt. Um, I'll put the Amazon affiliate links down below on, to, on this vlog. But these things have been a godsend uh, for my solo moving prospects. Um, you know, I was hoping that uh, I could get additional help, but so many of my friends are going through it right now and I can handle a lot of this myself The, the big stuff that I know that I could potentially injure myself with I'm <clears throat> gonna ask for help with that Quack quack So this is where the holes are I'll try and sand it down and then add this paste because It sure does say it doesn't need any sanding, but uh, I was not prepared to buy this one, but um, we'll see if it works ah! Okay, so I just got everyday use sandpaper because I just didn't know what grit to get. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, here it is. All right, cool. Awesome. I'm gonna sand this down. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, I think it's ready. Ooh, it's kind of smooth. It's really smooth, actually. Now, let's cut this. Cuts. Damn, I think I might need my trauma shears, which is in my car. Okay, I got my trauma shears for my car. These are supposed to be indestructible, so let's see. Oh, wow. They are indestructible. All right, let's fill this hole up. I'm supposed to mess around with it a little bit. Oh, am I supposed to use it all in one? Oh no, there's a cap. Okay, cool. How hard am I supposed to squeeze? Pretty hard. Okay, all right. Coming out. All right, we filled her up. Fill this up. I really should have gotten an easel, but I don't have it. So we're just gonna... We're just gonna do that. Your favorite boy, Ben Hassin, uh, is not a home improvement expert. <laughs> Yo, but it looks like it's pasting on pretty awesome. All right. 
All right, that should be good for this one. So let's do all the, all the other holes. So the ones on this wall are actually pretty flush and it's supposed to turn white once it completely dries. So we'll find out tomorrow morning to see if it worked. On these ones, it might need a second application, the bigger holes that I have. Let me see, it's still a little bit caved in. So I'm gonna have to go in and redo them. I haven't done the ones in the bedroom yet, but um, if this ends up being successful, I'm gonna do a second application on that one and then do the ones on the bedroom. So last night, um, after dropping off all the uh, donation items, yay, um, I managed to go to Home Depot and get um, the the spankles, <laughs> not spankle, it's called spackle, um, but Home Depot usually sells an all-in-one kit, so it includes like the spack, the spackling, spankling, um, spackling in it, in addition to like sandpaper on the lid, and um, there's like a curve near the bottom so you can smear the spackle but um they were all out my home depot um so i didn't have that option but i ended up getting the drydex hole filler <laughs> when i was writing my list of things to get from home depot i didn't i forgot what i keep forgetting even though i i, I mentioned it earlier in the vlog what it's called i wrote down a hole filler and i was looking at it i was like Sounds a little suggestive, but <laughs> but um, I ended up getting the dry deck spackling and nail hole filler, and this thing smears on pink, and when it dries, it turns white. So it's I've been applying that last night to all the major holes in my wall, and then I ended up getting sandpaper um, by itself, a sanding sponge. Um, I really didn't know what grit to get, <laughs> get. so, but, but they had, um, a, a sandpaper block for dummies. They said this is good for most projects. So I got this one. So these two, they've been actually working really well. Um, I filmed myself like applying it to the big holes in my bathroom, but I ended up applying it to all the holes and they said to wait five hours for it to completely dry. So let's see some of those results. So this is the one that I did last night on the video that I filmed. And look, it's actually pretty flush. Like both of it's really flush. I sanded it down a little bit after uh, it completely dried. And this is amazing. This is great work. So all the all the like leasing company will have to do is just paint over it. I'm not gonna get paint and do all of that. That's too much work. I'm just filling out the holes so I, they don't take more out of my uh, security deposit. But um, the bigger holes, I definitely need to give a second application because if you look at the bigger holes that I've done, the bigger holes there's still a bit of recession in them. So I am going to refill it today and. Hopefully it goes in flush afterwards. Then I had the great idea to fill out all the little small holes that I've um, I've like put into the walls and it's done an incredible job. You can't even tell. Like um, here, there were four holes up here. Y'all probably can't even see it on the video, but there were four holes here. And yes, it did dry white, but because the paint is off white, you can't really notice it at all. So this is great. Um, it's gonna get a lot of the costs down on my <laughs> uh, on on my fees post moving fees. So yeah, like I can't even tell where I filled. There were two holes here, one here and one here. I can't even tell where it was um, because it dried. Oh, right here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but um, yeah, there's one right here that I feel. Oh yeah, here's the other one. So uh, this is gonna probably make my ex inspection go a lot smoother but you'll also notice see in the bigger ones uh you can s there's still a bit of recession on this one so i'm gonna probably reapply this one's actually pretty good it's pretty flush uh, i might do a second application but yeah um i am very very happy with the results of that um spackling spackling spankling spank uh paste but y'all know when um you start a new hobby or you start getting expertise in a certain area and then you start seeing the world as like <laughs> different like this kind of what i've experienced when i first got into medicine i was like wow there are all these things that we uh, are never aware of that is actually terrible for us and i've realized i've learned a lot um 
while learning how to fill nail holes because I realized this apartment is garbage. Like they did the shoddiest work <laughs> to fill the prior tenants, whoever lived here before or the people even before that to fill their wall mistakes. So like I can tell now that there are places here where they've done really shoddy like patchwork for the drywall. So I was filling out this, this hole right here you can notice it but there's a point of like square paint here so definitely there was a big hole here one time and they patched it so i can tell that and then if you look up there i don't know if you can see it in the video but there's a bit of paint that looks a little different there's two big encasings in this wall that looks a little um different which means they probably had to apply more drywall and then repaint it and the paint wasn't exactly the same color as the rest of the wall. You, it's very hard to notice as like a layperson. Like I've lived here for almost, yeah, I've lived here for almost three years and I've never noticed these things until I started fixing up my walls, but there are so much of the stuff all throughout the apartment. So um, it has me second guessing ever buying a house. <laughs> Cause then like, I'm gonna have to tear down the house every couple of years and rebuild it. Cause um, it looks like places like this never stay uh, solid. So uh, I think we're about to hit the end of this vlog and I wanna end off this vlog with talking about mental health. Because, you know, uh, earlier in this vlog, I told y'all about how I was about to go to campus and there was just like something that happened um, where someone experienced a break, a mental break, and hurt a bunch of people uh, in my city. And it's a very, very unfortunate situation and it's been exacerbated by how loose the gun regulations are in the state, which makes me very, very frustrated. But every time when more and more details about the, per the, uh, the person who did this horrible thing has been coming out, there's been over focus on this person's mental health and vilifying this person, ostracizing this person, and just making it seem like you have to be a different type of person to commit a crime like this. That's not how I see the world. The thing is, is that as I've been a medical student, as I've been going into the field of psychiatry, I've realized that over time, anyone, even myself, even you watching this video, anyone is capable of having a mental break, a psychotic episode, uh, a delusional disorder. Anyone is capable of having something like that happen to them. It's not just some rando that you don't know, someone who's had a really oppressed background. I've had people who make six figures. Some of the richest people in this city have mental health episodes. It is not exclusive to a certain group of people, exclusive to a certain population. It, that's just not true. That is a fallacy that's been created for us to um, kind of put people who have had mental health issues and mental health breaks in a box and t tell them that they're different from us. That's not true. That's it's We are all capable of having something like this. What do we need to do from here on out? As I feel like as soon as people start acknowledging that, yo, these are people in our own communities, these are people that could be us, is when we actually start doing the work to address mental health, to address people who've been lost and made invisible by society. This is how we can create programs, how we can create interventions on um, stopping things from happening like what happened earlier this week. And I just, it just disappoints me where like constantly whenever there's like a crime or, and there's like a political motive under that crime, we continue to ostracize a minority and target a minority instead of being like, hey, what are we doing wrong together? Because this keeps happening in our country. And uh, speaking on this vlog, there's only probably gonna be a hundred people who watch this. So uh, it's never going to like, you know, 
my words will never really matter but i this is my little online journal for you all but also i just feel like whoever watches this is understands this is that you you can see the world in a different light i think although medicine has made me a lot more jaded it's definitely created a lot of issues in my life i think it's made me a better person and I think it's opened my eyes to the struggles of many, many different types of people that I wouldn't have had exposure to. And I've been humble enough to acknowledge that these are my people. Unfortunately, I do know a lot of medical providers, a lot of people who go into psychiatry who see these horrible things, this, like, probably sitting right beside me when they're seeing these horrible things, but they internalize it as very much as society does, which is that's not me, that's them. And I'm going to control them and I'm going to treat them. But when I treat a patient, it's always like I see myself in my patients. I see my family, my friends, people of my community. I see them as part of my family, part of my community. And there is a lot to say about creating that boundary between professionalism and getting too close to a patient. And I do, I do keep that with me. But at the same time, there will never be a time in my life where a patient is so separated from me that I could not see myself in them. That's just not how it is. That's just not human. how human life is. No human life is different from mine. Anyways, uh, that was a little heavy, but it's been weighing down on me for the past week. It's been weighing down on me for a long time, and uh, y'all are my <laughs> visual journal audience. It's not just a vlog, it's literally me an average guy who just happens to be a doctor and trans talking about life with y'all through the camera. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching this. Uh, I am going to go to the gym right now, get some stuff, gonna give up give, give up this coffee table that you're, you're sitting on right now uh, tonight and uh, continue to pack and move for the rest of the week. And hopefully tomorrow I'll go on a little trip with my family. Anyways, love y'all so much. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Ben.